Yo. <sighs> so, I finished the first shift of the day. Got a little in between time between jobs and, you know, I just want to talk about some stuff that's been going on. So, one thing that's really cool is I realized that my life is pivoting more towards a work-oriented focus rather than a search-oriented focus. For, I think since I've been 18 and really started caring about health, I've been on the search for what is the most optimal way to exist relative to health, like eating-wise, you know? And I, I'm someone that is obsessive. So when I started discovering nutrition, nutrition theories, um, vitamins, fasting, all that stuff, I started really diving into it. Um, the only issue was is I couldn't lie to myself that even though I felt like I knew what every single vegetable and fruit had in terms of their vitamin content and what we needed and what each vitamin did, it, there was no structure. You know, I, I, I always felt sick, especially when I was combining things to get all of my nutrients in for the day. And I, I eventually found the Mucosis Diet Healing System. And so the search in that regard for health is completely over. Um, my, my spirituality, man, I was raised Catholic and I love Jesus Christ. I still love the idea, the idea of Jesus Christ. Um, but I left Catholicism when I was like 16. I silently just denounced. I was like, very, like no, no more. Um, dabbled with Hinduism. I love yoga. I absolutely adore yoga. But even within yoga, I found myself hopping from teacher to teacher because it just wasn't it for me. And finally, I've settled. Like, it, it makes the most sense. It is the mucusless diet healing system of spirituality for me. And then partnerships, love. I've been looking and trying forever. Even when I was a kid, I have had good relationships, but no, like things weren't, they usually fell apart within six months and then I just decided to drag things along. Um, and that's over in that regard. And so that's what I mean by search oriented focus. I finally found the things. Now it's time to get to work. And I'm grateful for that. I'm very, very grateful for that. And uh, it's just it's just really cool. You know, seek and you shall find, genuinely. See, if you don't stop searching, you're gonna find it eventually. So that's really cool. Um, with the book, things have been really fun with that. I would like to pull it up just to see what I was on. But, uh, what I'm essentially doing is I'm taking the book and expounding upon it and just really, really, really spelling it out for you what the author, Eret, is trying to portray. Um, because there's a lot of things that are implied through his, through his teachings. There, a lot of his paragraphs are just so dense with meaning and information and it's literally just like three or four sentences. Um, so I find the need to kind of like unravel that and explain that a little bit because a lot of times if you're just casually reading phew, over your head. Um, but if you want to just really on the first go get every drop of information, that's what I'm doing. And yesterday I was expounding upon how the human body functions entirely through air. So that makes breathing the most important thing in one's life. Because in Eret's perception to how the body works, the physiology, the lungs are the pump of the blood, the driving force of the blood, and the heart acts as a pressure regulating valve. And so that's what I am on next. I have found some papers. They were given to me through the mucusless diet or mucusfreelife.com. And then along with the, the examples that Eric gives on why it doesn't make sense that the heart is the pump, um, 
that's going to be the next thing that I that I further explain, further expound upon, because even though it's very simple and it really, really isn't um, the most important thing, the most important thing is transition diet, um, transitioning your way away from the worst foods that are killing you. Um, it is important to know because once you start to transition away from the worst foods and you are, you know, you have more mental and physical capacity and capability, you really should start focusing on the breathing and relying solely on the breath as often as you can. Because one, especially when I fast, where your mind can go is ju it's just interesting. It's different. Um, and what I hesitate to talk about, but I am going to talk about it anyway, is this magic. It's like the world comes together for you. Yes, you're gonna suffer, especially during fasting. You have to, you know, pay your dues for years and years and years of wrong eating. Um, and you especially have to pay for the wrong eating that your parents did um, because there's a very good chance your parents weren't mucusless diet eaters. They weren't on a mucusless diet of fruits and fat-free starch-free vegetables and i also mean fat-free vegetables i mean fat-free fruits too avocados don't count um, there's a good chance that you were born with a saddening amount of mucus within your system and so as this stuff becomes eliminated during fasting and the waste gets loosened and now enters circulation enters your bloodstream it sucks and it's not fun but it passes and you feel incredible and during those moments of let's go you get peaks at to to where your life is going to be as your cleanliness cleanliness level that you're reaching that that mental clarity level that you're reaching becomes your default mode and it's, it's nothing short of amazing and exciting because of what you become capable of when you stop prioritizing eating. Because eating for most of us is just an emotional outlet. I'm a way to, to take the edge off, you know? And it's socially acceptable to eat absolute garbage. It's insane. And especially eating large and large amounts of mixed foods. It's, it's in, as you become cleaner, and you just really start to, to understand what people are doing and what you have done with food, it becomes nothing short of insanity when you look at when you look at what you did and you look at what others are doing, it's nothing short of insanity. And it makes sense because you're so doped up through these foods. These foods make you high. They completely alter your consciousness. And people don't want to look as food as a drug but drugs alter your consciousness hey anything that you intake that alters your state of consciousness is a drug i mean a breath of fresh air in a sense is a drug it's like whew, that's nice you know like that makes me feel good it's a drug in its own right very flexible with the term drug if you can't tell but that's uh that's something that i have been working on and it's been really really fun and the book is far from being done but as i progress i just can't help but feel blessed that the genius of this work that arnold eric presented is in my hands and that i'm able to expound upon it as i do and you know still building confidence and sharing it with some and still deciding how I'm gonna manage the money side of my life. But whenever I think about that, like my body and everything is just literally telling me like, don't like, don't worry about that. Don't focus on that right now. Like, you're, that's, that's too much. That's too much, that's unnecessary. That's unnecessary. And anything that creates unnecessary processes in life, it just creates chaos. That's, that's chaos. And thank you to Spira for um, you know, giving me that definition. Professor Spira. 
Chaos is just anything unnecessary within your night and within your life. So thinking about money, trying to figure out how I'm going to make money, this, that, and the fourth, it truly just creates unnecessary stress. And really, what what is necessary is the cleansing of my body, the focus on healing, because that in of itself just opens up my creativity like nothing else and through that creativity i find natural inspiration to just do things i i want to work on my youtube i want to work on the book and these inspirations will lead to new pathways for income like it, it'll come it will come there's no doubt with in my mind like i'm moving forward yeah i might be moving slower than i want to at times but it's because at the times that i'm not working on those things it's because I'm I'm on the field I'm doing the work you know so I'm not making so many YouTube videos it's just it wouldn't it wouldn't be appropriate it would cause a lot of unnecessary friction in my life um, and then spiritually too right now I do feel alone on that path and I, I do have trouble explaining it to others but I think really it's just it's so simple I get uncomfortable with explaining it to others because a lot of people like com complexity um, with spirituality, which that's just a mind game. You know, that's just a lot of times it's just ego stroking and this is nothing like that. It completely liquidates you, completely dissolves what you think you are. And it's a slow process. It's like the mucusless diet healing system. It's a slow process, but by God, is it sure? You know, by God, is it sure to work? So that's that's one thing that I will eventually get to. It almost feels like I have to. Like every other thing just feels like a distraction when I'm not actively working towards that, which is also another thing. Like, I don't know how much longer I'll just keep playing around with distractions. Who knows? It could be a couple years, but I'm gonna just keep moving. I understand that I've given up a lot of my life for this and I regret none of it. I regret none of it. Love you. Bye.